Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm on the marketing team here at Bullhorn, and I wanted to cover a quick couple of housekeeping notes uh, before we begin. All phones will be muted during today's presentation, but we strongly encourage you to ask any questions in the question pane that's on the right-hand side of your screen. We'll get to as many questions as possible before the end of the session, and be sure to follow up with you individually if we don't get to your question. Today's webinar will be recorded and you will receive a copy of the recording within the next 24 hours. We should wrap up within 45 minutes. And with that, I'd like to hand it to today's presenters. Thanks, Alex. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the webinar. Today, we are going to be covering off the latest and greatest features for Bullhorn onboarding. Uh, quick introductions. I'm Ben Carter. I'm the Sales and Strategy Director for onboarding here at Bullhorn. Um, I've been with Bullhorn for just under two years now, but I was a customer for many years before then. And one quick fun fact about me, I was actually the first UK customer to buy Bullhorn onboarding many years ago. So I do know this feature very, I do know this, this, this product very well, and I've been using it for a long time. Uh, with me today is my colleague, Mary Kay. Mary, Mary Kay, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Sure. This is Mary Kay Mackin. I'm a senior solutions consultant. I've been with Bullhorn for two years, and I too came to Bullhorn um, as a customer. So I spent nine years as a Bullhorn customer as well. Perfect. So today, what are we going to be going through? For the next 40 minutes or so, we will be just talking a little bit around what Bullhorn onboarding is as a tool and how it can help you, uh, why it's beneficial for our customers that are using it, and we're gonna share some of that information to you. I'm gonna take us through the new features, and Mary Kay will then take us into a part of a demonstration of some of those features as well. After that, it'll come back to myself, and I'll take us through what the roadmap looks like for the product as well. So fun times, we can talk about what direction onboarding is going in and look to the future. And then lastly, we'll wrap up with any questions there as well. So yeah, as Alex said, please do drop your questions into the question panel down the side there. So what is Bullhorn onboarding? Easiest way to think about it is it's a document management tool that can, that can automate your candidate compliance by requesting and capturing that information electronically. Sounds like a mouthful. Fundamentally, what it is, it's a way for candidates to interact with your database via a portal where you can put requests in to fill out documentation, upload documentation, and then once that's completed, you can track all that information inside Bullhorn to the point where they're ready to work, or it could be that you're onboarding them, it could be that you're they get their new hires, or even potentially rehires. It is actually a system that can be used anywhere by the candidate. So a couple of screenshots here, you can use it on a desktop, you can use it on a tablet, you can also use it on a mobile phone. So when you think about uploading any documentation, actually natively the phone just lets you browse your gallery and just upload documentation that way as well. And there's also a localized experience. This is a little known fact in North America actually, that there's more than one language available in this product. So not all of these languages will be relevant to you, but you may have European, presence as well as an organization, but things like Spanish and French are available in the system. And Mary Kay is going to show a couple of ways that we can we can hand we can set these up as well. But I just wanted to highlight the fact that this is multilingual at the same time. Why is onboarding important and especially bullhorn onboarding? So it's definitely a way of getting ahead of the competition. In a recent poll, 60% of job seekers actually reported a poor experience with onboarding through agencies. And that was just a generic industry poll. And on the other side of that, only 24% of agencies that were polled actually admitted that they fully automate their onboarding, their onboarding um, process today. There's lots of benefits to it as well. You can reduce cost and sales time. You don't need your recruiting or your sales team tied up dealing with chasing documentation from candidates. You can have a nice streamlined team that can do that and utilize technology in order to achieve that. Secondly, it's a way of strengthening your brand. There's, there's been a big buzz over the last few years and everybody's been talking about candidate experience. And really for candidate experience, it's about where they feel comfortable coming back to time and time again, if they're a temporary or contract worker and having a strong online system that is streamlined and easy for a candidate to use is a great way to strengthen your brand there as well. And thirdly, it's a way for you to control your documentation and your business. So if you're doing a manual process today, You've probably got lots of templates of documents that get sent out to candidates. They're filling those out. Those documents get updated from time to time as more regulations change or you need to capture more information. 
And from that, it's really hard to track what version is really going out the door if people are doing a manual process. So being able to have a system that you can update these documents anytime you need to, and, and they're always sending the, the latest version, again, it's a huge benefit. It can also improve efficiency throughout the, throughout the entire process as well. So from recruiting or sales, they can very easily visualize the status of that candidate onboards. So inside Bullhorn, not even, not even going into the onboarding system, but inside the actual ATS, they can look at a candidate record or they can look on their dashboard and they can actually see the status of these candidates and if they're ready to start working yet. So that's removing the need to chase via email, chase over the phone, walking across the office and speaking to the onboarding team. They can actually see this data real time and they know exactly when to take action. You can quickly send these documents and packets to candidates at any stage through the process as well. So whether it's from a candidate record where you're in a pre-hire stage, whether it's as they're going through a job process, you can send you can send these requests from a job or even at placement stage as well. You can trigger these at any time and you can choose if you want your sales and recruiting team to do it or if you want to hold that control back and just have your onboarding team doing that. And lastly, you can search view and you can take actions right from inside the onboarding platform. So part of today's demonstration, we're going to show you the latest user interface in there and you'll be able to see just how easy it is to navigate lists, filter down to exactly what actions you need to take. Secondly, from, operation, for, sorry, secondly, from operations, you can better visualize entire pools of your pre-hire, new hire and rehire candidates. You can build and edit documents with an easy document builder. So you can upload those documents and map those fields on that you want to interact with. Again, Mary Kay is going to take us through that in a bit. And you can also easily track the status of E-Verify. So if you are if you are an E-Verify customer today, you can actually connect E-Verify to onboarding and you can track the status of your, of your I-9s from within the platform. And lastly, for the candidate, it's an online portal for them to access and you can view in a, and they can view it in their preferred language. You can easily view uh, complete and sign documents on any device as I've covered. And lastly, you can sign documents electronically using e-signature. So there's two types of signature from within the system. There's one where you'll draw that signature, either using a stylus, your mouse or your finger, or you can digitally stamp with an e-signature as well. So that's, that's stamping the address, the date, uh, sorry, the IP address, the date and the time that that's happening as well. Life without an onboarding solution. Uh, I'm hoping that we've marketed this, this webinar to the right people and there's going to be a mix of customers on here and there's probably going to be a, a few companies on here where you may be going through a manual process today. I've been there before I bought onboarding and what I wanted to visualize here was just a very manual way but quite a streamlined manual way. I promise you what you're probably going through is a lot more complex but I just wanted to highlight that actually this is quite a complex and 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 messy thing that you have to do if you're not using a system to do it there's lots of keywords in here that are highlighting like your scanning and your printing your emailing your uploading your storing things in filing cabinets so you, so you, you you take up storage in offices where you can actually have more recruiting or sales teams it's really manual process there and it's really hard to track probably doing it in something like excel as well as i said there's probably lots of filing cabinets there i just wanted to highlight the fact of as you know, as being a Bullhorn customer, there's unlimited storage. We'll never charge you for anything that you store in Bullhorn. So actually it is the best place to store all of, all of that documentation you're capturing. You don't need these filing cabinets anymore when you can have everything synchronized straight into the candidate record as you need. Mary Kay is actually going to mention that in the, in the demo as well. I'm not stealing too much thunder there, but you can have these documents flow exactly where you need them to. And there's a new feature that we'll talk about in a moment with more information that can flow as well. And lastly, how it works, it's a seamless experience between the candidate and Bullhorn users. You can upload your documents and you can map your fields. You can send documentation to the candidate and that has, you can have any party that does that in your organization. The candidate completes these in that web portal. You, you, can, you can put in verification and approval stages at any place you need to, so you're in total control that you're not gonna approve a placement or have someone start work until everything's correct and in the right place. And lastly, that document and the field data in a document can flow. So documents can flow back to the files tab in a candidate, but the information that's been put in these forms can also flow back to fields. So that's removing that, that need for double entry of data. So back in January, we refreshed the user interface and a lot has actually happened since then. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna recap us on that. 
But for anyone that was potentially looking at onboarding previously, or even any onboarding customers on here that were that were customers uh, pre-January, you know it was a dramatic difference between the old user interface and the new one. The new one is now aligned fully with the direction of the entire platform. So we brought it into the Novo experience. I do understand there's still customers moving to Novo and there's plans in place to get you there. It doesn't mean that onboarding won't work for you today. It will still work perfectly, even if you're in S release. But what we've now done is brought it into the Novo standard so that number one, it's a lot easier and more intuitive to use. But number two, it actually unlocks the ability for us to develop on it a lot easier. So what the new UI gave us, straight out the box, we got a vastly improved document builder. We'll see that today in a demo. It brought us a Novo experience, as I explained. One of the key reasons for that was we need to remove Flash from any technology, and that's now completed as well. So there's, there's no more need to use Flash. As we know, that's gonna be non-supported as of 2020 by most browsers. Uh, it actually gave us the ability to archive documents and packets. So we could always re-upload a new version of a document, no problem, but now you can actually archive these. So you can have multiple versions in the system, so you can always track what those older versions were. And if needs be, you can you can unarchive that and send that if, if required as well. It's good for version control, very good if you're working to any ISO standards as well. But lastly, and the key one was having that new user interface and being written in that new language, it now gave us the ability to release month uh, release features on a monthly basis. We've got a fun fact. We've released more features into the platform since the UI refresh in January than we ever did prior to this. So as you can tell, just unlocking that user interface has actually given us the ability to, to endlessly take this where we need to for our customers now. So the latest enhancements since January, what else has come? And this is what we're here today for, for the latest and greatest. I'm just gonna talk us through this list quickly and then we'll go over to Mary Kay. So first of all, it gave us that ability to do, to do advanced list filtering. So that visualization I showed you a moment ago, and it had the, it had the visualization and it had the UI so you can see color coding for where people are and have, have they completed their tasks yet or not. This is a great way for us to do that. But not only that, we can also, we can also filter these lists the same way we do in Bullhorn, really simple the way, the way that that works and really intuitive. Secondly, we gave field flow back. So this was one that every customer was asking for. Everybody wanted it. We listened, we just had to rebuild it before we could achieve it. But what this now gives us is any information that's on a document, that's filled in by a candidate, you can set that to flow back to the candidate record. So you never have to double, double enter data or copy and paste anything manually again. Next up, we've got hyperlinks in documents. So all this is is a way where you can embed a hyperlink in any document, and when they click it, it will redirect them out to another web page. No different, to, no, no different to having a hyperlink in a Word document, for example. The benefits of this are a couple of things. Number one, GDPR came to Europe last year, and it was and it, and it was really important that that you you had to track everything and make sure that everyone read privacy policies. This is a way that you can redirect people out to your privacy policies if you're working to any standard like GDPR, or even with the new regulations that are coming to a few of the states in, in North America at the moment. Um, this would just be a way you can track safely that you know that they have gone and they've hit that website. So therefore, you know they've at least attempted to read that privacy policy, and you can now track that in an auditable way as well. Next, you can export export data in that list. So this isn't for everybody. We don't turn on export capabilities unless you want us to. But what this will do is that list of that, that dashboard list, you can now export that out. If you want to bring in more data from external systems and track more things in a larger way, you can now bring that data out with these. Uh, speaking of GDPR, you can now hide the anonymized records. Again, for any, any companies that are out there, if you've got any European presence or you are working to any standards like this, just a reminder, with Bullhorn, you can anonymize records to the standard of, of, of what you need to achieve for GDPR, so it's the right to be forgotten. So what that will do is that will nuke any information, files, field data, um, all history, all notes, all emails that have synced in, everything goes and it leaves a blank record and it anonymizes the name. Now, if they've ever been onboarded in the past, that will then update to onboarding to the point where that anonymized name will still appear, but we, we know when it's anonymized, so we can hide those out the way if needs be so they don't clutter up any space. Multilingual documentation. We are going to go into this as, as part of the demo, but again, it's just to remind you that let's say you've got an English version of a form that needs to be completed, and you may be also recruiting in Canada. You can have a French version of that, and when sending, you can pick at what at what language that goes out as. 
And then lastly, ca uh, candidate reminders is one of the most recent releases we've done. A lot of our customers just wanted the system to remind candidates to complete any outstanding actions. We've now given the ability to do that. We are going to cover that off today, along with the documentation, along with setting up field flow back. And we're going to just re recap on how that dashboard looks. But we're also going to give you the overview of what that Novo UI feels like and also how to build a document. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Mary Kay now and she's going to start the presentation. Great, thanks so much, Ben. Perfect. So, um, from the perspective, we're, we're going to take a look at um, onboarding from the perspective of an administrator. And um, you can see here with the refresh of the onboarding, um, the, the user interface, um, it gives you an updated experience as well as an overall very intuitive feel. It's very familiar, especially from a consistency standpoint, from the the front end of Bullhorn. Um, as Ben mentioned, we also removed the flash and it, it, it does allow us to, re to um, release features monthly within the, with this new version. Now, um, we've started here on the placement list within the onboarding tool and here administrators can review all the upcoming placements and the, the columns can be filtered in order um, for the consumer to be able to gather the information that they may need from this list. For example, um, it's very easy to see the status of documents being collected, um, as well as the remaining number of outstanding documents. I can hover over uh, each of these bars and, and it will show me um, from a, a document collection standpoint, submission as well as approved, and I can filter accordingly on each of these lists. Um, the green lets me know that each of my documents um, has been collected that I'm, I'm looking for. I can also filter by start date in order to manage all upcoming starts, um, even by time period as well. So if I want to look at starts that may have been the previous previous um, month or even um, previous week, as well as upcoming starts, it allows administrators to uh, to manage those starts, the start period as well. And by employee type, I want to point out also that being able to, to manage those the column here and filter by um, whether it's permanent, um, temporary, um, is also a very um, helpful way to, to consume that information. Now, like the Bullhorn front office user interface, the binoculars um, tab, the binoculars are, are available for the slide out. Um, so that it's very easy to be able to um, manage documents or ma manage the records and be able to take actions without even going into the list view. So from here, we, we can take um, actions directly from the record and we're going to do that here shortly in a minute. But having this visibility lets you lets you be proactive rather than reactive in collecting and managing documents throughout that entire onboarding process. So from here, we can send a document, and we're going to do that shortly. But before we do that, I want to look at how we manage documents, and we do that from the onboarding tab. So shifting over to the onboarding tab, um, under this tab, we also can manage e-verify submissions um, in cases, as well as the creation of packets and flowback, as well as, as creation of our documents. So we can customize our field flowback, our fields to flow back into Bullhorn fields or documents to flow back um, into the Bullhorn record as well. So um, for, from a, a configurability standpoint, that really depends on, on your workflow, but it's, it's in that information allows us to, to be able to, to get that right back into Bullhorn as soon as the document is filled out, whether it's an individual field or whether it's a full document that, that um, you'd like to have visibility to in the front end of Bullhorn. Um, we mentioned packets. Again, those packets can be created to group documents for easy distribution. Administrators may also want to automate the sending of packets, which alleviates unnecessary work for the team. So within, within our documents tab here, um, we have a couple documents that I've got pulled up on the screen. And um, we're going to take a look at and potentially here edit a document. So looking at the the uber contractor nda that i've got pulled up from this list we we can um upload a document here or we can edit our existing document so as an example let's say that i want to um to edit this document and i may even want to as an administrator um make, create a new translation of this document um potentially uh translate from english to spanish for my um spanish speaking or reading candidates 
I can do that by selecting my actions button here and then from here we can we can um, create a new document translation and once I, I click into that translation I can select the, the language that I'd like to translate that the document and then I would upload that translated version of the document and with the parent document in place what that does is it allows my candidate to be able to see and select from the candidate portal uh, the appropriate version of the document depending on the language they'd like to select so it's it's giving that it's giving them that option by having that 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 translated version of the document. Now I I have one created here below in this welcome to Uber document, and when I hit my arrow, what this does is it shows that I've got this document translated into multiple different languages. And from an administrator standpoint, I can see and manage these documents. But on the candidate side, which we'll take a look at shortly you'll be able to see that that the candidates can toggle through from um, language to language or from document to document in order to make a selection if that's applicable and 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 uh, an option for them so having the multiple versions of the languages um, be able to be selected by this the sender gives you uh, gives you a, a tremendous opportunity from for uh, the the um, candidates to make that choice so let's take a look at one of these um, We'll, hit, we'll go into the French version here from an edit standpoint. Now you can see I've got my Welcome to Uber document in French, and I've got my fields available here that have been tagged within the document. So what, what we want to look at is how is the editability of these fields. Fields can be dragged and dropped into the document in order to be able to, to tag them. Um, now. I've got the candidate last name field tagged here, and this is where our flowback targets are created in order to flow back um, and map those specific fields onto the, the uh, records within Bullhorn. So in this case, the field name is the, the candidate last name. I've got a flowback target, which means that any corrections made um, would or, or any changes made would flow back to the candidate last name field. But I also have a source. Um, field that's being pulled in. So I've, I've identified that the employee's last name is being pulled in from my Bullhorn record as well. So when my candidate goes to, to complete this document, this source field will be pre-populated for my candidate as well. So I've identified the source as well as a flowback target um, within this field. And I can, I can do the same thing here from a, um, for the, uh, Hang on, there we go. For my um, candidate first name field as well. Say, um, same thing, so I've, I've got both um, fields flowing back. We'll hit edit so you can take a look at that one as well. So from a, from a um, flow back target, again, first name, source field, first name as well. So when, when we go to complete this document from the candidate's perspective, we'll see that that's been pre-populated and any changes made will also flow back to the, to the Bullhorn record. Now, let's go ahead and send uh, this document, and we'll use this one as an example since we've identified um, those fields, and we'll be able to see as an, it will be able to see that that flow back in action. So we'll go back to we'll go back to that candidate here, and um, let's take a look at this candidate Jack Mandarin that we were reviewing previously, for, and we will um, send the documents. And we will find that same Uber document, our welcome um, document, and we'll send. And we, we've selected the Uber welcome document, but as you can see here, we've got the toggle to select the language, and we're going to select the French version of that that document in order to send that document to our candidate Jack. So we're going to hit that send, and now that can't that document has been. Um, sent out to our candidate. And now when our, when our candidate receives that um, document in, in his candidate portal, um, it will be in, in that French version. So let, let's go ahead and, and um, log in as if we are the candidate and we can um, view that from a, yep, hang on one sec, we'll, we'll toggle over and, and log in as our candidate. There we go. And now from a notification standpoint, I've logged in as Jack into our to the candidate portal. 
And what I've gotten is a notification letting me know that, that I've received a new document for him to review. And you can see here within our documents portal, um, Jack has on the left-hand side of the portal the documents that are awaiting his attention. And on the right-hand side, he's got the documents that, um, he's, that he has already completed. But here, the French version of our Welcome to Uber document is ready and waiting for him to, to go through and submit. So we're gonna open up that document and be able to see that Jack's information has been pulled through, the autofill has worked, and his, his documentation here, um, his name and first name and last name have been autofilled um, through because of those source fields. And then if we go in and, and we um, complete the document, and let's just say he lives Main Street, and we'll, fill out the remaining portion here of the document. I'm not gonna put his bank information all the way through, but we'll add this. Now let's say for example, I, I'm Jack, but really I, my preferred name is Jonathan. So I can make that change to Jonathan on the document and I can select my date and sign the document. and then submit that document. And now that, oops, I missed a field. Now that document is, is submitted. There we go. So now, because I've completed a field with a flowback target, when I go back into Bullhorn, that change will be made and reflected in my bull, uh, in, within Bullhorn. So toggling back over to Bullhorn, if I go to my record where Jack Mandarin, this is my Jack Mandarin record, if I up, refresh or update that record, we'll be able to see that his name has changed now to Jonathan because of the flowback from that document. So, make, so giving that, um, having that, that opportunity for uh, your consultants or candidates to make those changes on documents, um, again, depending on, on the fields that you select, um, is, is very helpful for, for updating information, whether it be addresses, phone numbers, names, and so forth. Let's go back into the onboarding tab and talk about messaging. And messaging is, is um, something that, that is very important when it comes to chasing documents. Um, one thing that recruiters and salespeople find themselves doing an awful lot is, is the task of, of chasing down paperwork. And within Bullhorn Onboarding, this alleviates that frustrating task by being able to set up messaging cadences and, and um, being able to email out um, reminders uh, as when as it relates to the uh, collecting of these documents. So for example, here we've got a paperwork due as soon as possible email, we've got um, send in your documents email, but these, um, these reminders are built into the solution. So the frequency and timing of the emails can be automated, their reminder cadence can be set up and will continue to go out until the documents are collected. So again, hitting my binoculars, I'm able to, to see the detail of the email that I've set up and I can um, set up these messages in order to continuously go out until the documents have been collected. And that removes that burden of chasing the, the paperwork from my team and, and it allows Bullhorn to do the work for me. And those emails will stop once that paperwork has been collected. So that automatically is, is triggered within the Bullhorn system. So let's let's go back to Ben. Great, thanks, Mary Kay. I'm just going to switch back to presenting. Yep, I just released presenting. There we go. Should be yep. good. Perfect. Thanks. Uh, yes, yeah, so as you can see, this come a long way in such a short amount of time just from that URL refresh and there's just more and more coming uh, we've got we're getting great feedback from it as well um, I'm just gonna leave this on screen for a second or two the one I actually want to highlight is the one in the middle which is the new look and feel is great uh, intro video was a good overview um, that's, that's something they read actually speaking of videos this is something else you saw a video embedded into that that experience for a candidate with that YouTube video Little known fact that you can actually do that. You can embed hosted videos within there as well. And a lot of our customers are now utilizing this to 
more value add, one of which can be some sort of training before start date, and they can now justify a higher margin of that placement as well with the client because they're they're providing that service of upskilling these candidates ready to start on day one. And the second common use as well is sometimes our customers will send a welcome video. And so the first thing that they, that the candidate receives in, in the onboarding platform is actually a welcome video. Could be from the, the owner, the CEO of the business, just giving them a quick overview as to who we are as an agency. And again, just increasing that brand awareness out there as well. So yeah, just thought I'd highlight that. We're getting nothing really positive feedback for, for the, the direction that the product's going in. Speaking of the direction the product's going in, let's talk about the future of onboarding quickly. So it is all around improving the candidate experience. There's two types of things that we do at Bullhorn when we're, when we're developing on when we're developing for onboarding. One is there's a dedicated team that just does big improvements to the system. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. There's also another part of the development team as well, which is we're always listening to customer feedback and anything that we can do and we can improve on that we are also going to build those improvements. And a lot of things that we've not covered today have also been released this year. And they're just around improvements and enhancements to the system. It could be removing a couple of clicks, uh, which as you know, Bullhorn is great within a two click methodology and, and bringing everything to that point as well. We're reducing less clicks, we're making it clearer on how to use things. So there's two sides to it, but the big development things that we're working on at the moment, all focused on the candidate experience. So the first one we're doing, the candidate portal that you saw today and you saw in the screenshots, we're building a new version of it. Um, we're not going to take away the old one, no, no, no time soon, uh, but we are actually rebuilding a whole new one from the ground up. First thing we're doing is we're also bringing that into the same design language as what Bullhorn Novo is. So something called Angular, we're going to upgrade it to that because it's going to give us more ability again to, to enhance and add new features to the candidate portal. We're actually building it from the ground up, thinking mobile first as well. So how can we improve all of your candidates out there that don't have time to sit in front of computers, may not have access to a computer, but they've got a smartphone and they can still complete everything they need to. Well, we're doing that by building it from the ground up. So it's gonna be a lot clearer. It's gonna be, you're gonna be able to understand exactly what you're doing, exactly where you need to go next and exactly what needs to happen. We're going to segment out areas from what's, uh, what's a document that needs to be completed versus things that you've completed in the past going to give access so they can do things like see what, doc what documents they've uploaded in the past and it's going to be it's going to scale up rather than scaling down so it's mobile first and we're going to scale up but anyone that's on this call if you if you if you did attend engage in boston this year you would have seen matt fisher up on stage talking about the direction of the mobile of the mobile candidate uh, experience and this is something that we're doing to work towards that as well so this is short term and when i say short term this is within a few months away we're potentially going to be at a place where we can start to look at this internally and have it ready to, to, to actually start to position this. So the development team's working hard on this as we speak. Lots of features to come on this. It's going to be great. Can't wait for it. Then longer term, once we've unlocked the ability to be able to develop further on, on the candidate portal, we're going, to, we're going to look at web forms. So Let's think about this a moment. What's a web form going to do that a document can't do? Well, it can do a lot actually. In, in, in terms of improving the candidate experience, you, we can a web form could actually go and populate all these documents for the candidate. So well, if a candidate has five documents and they have to repeat themselves a few times in, the, in those documents, not a great experience. Number one, you should know a candidate should never provide information that you already, that you already hold about them. We can do that by pre-filling the documents. But then if they have to repeat themselves through these documents as well, yes, we've got an autofill feature that that does a bit of machine learning and can offer that information to candidates. But with a web form, they fill out a simple web form and that information, you can then set those fields to go populate documents anywhere you need to. Think of it like TurboTax. You fill out your form, you click next. It will present the document to you in a completed sort of fashion. If you're happy, you click to sign and you can submit all those back. And also in that web form, you can be uploading and, and, and sharing information there as well. So that is the that is the future of the product. I'm now going to hand it back to Alex for any questions. Awesome, thank you. Uh, so we do have some questions coming in, but if you have any other questions, definitely feel free to put them in the question panel. Um, first up, someone would like to know what languages come out of the box with onboarding. 
Yeah, great. Uh, so for anyone that anyone that could have missed the um, the early slides in this in the presentation, so there's five languages out of the box: English as default, and then you can enable German and Dutch, which is two European languages that aren't that common in North America. But then you can also do French and you can do Spanish. And when we say French and Spanish, what we mean there is in the candidate experience, the candidate can toggle the language they want to see the actual portal in, and therefore all the system text and everything else can all can all switch and become that language as well. Couple that with the language versions of documents means that you can give them a 100% local native experience. Great, we have a question sort of on a similar vein. Someone asks, um, does the system translate the documents? Oh yeah, great question. So we don't actually do any translation of the documents. The documents are 100% in your control. So all you need to do is get a document ready to upload and you'll upload that in a PDF format. From there, that's when you'll map the fields on and build the document out for the candidate to interact so the actual translation of the document you'll do that offline and you'll control all that and then you'll just upload that translated version in that little window that mary kay showed there great uh, another question is can you auto send documents based on certain criteria in bullhorn we're getting some good questions today i like this yeah that's another great question so you can um you can you can auto trigger a packet so a packet is going to be a bunch of documents, whether that be one or many, and you can map that logic to certain places of sort of ATS data. So for an example, it could be the candidate status could trigger a packet to go out. So that could be a candidate status of start onboarding, for example, that could trigger a packet to go out, which could be the welcome packet that may not be any client related data in there. It's just around you and your agency and capturing information you need to for that candidate. You could also do that trigger from any information stored in placements as well. And that includes custom text fields or custom fields as well that you've added. You can have that be a trigger point to send out one. A placement, for example, with state in the address of where the placement is, that could trigger a specific packet that relates to specific state information that will go out to that candidate. Great, awesome. We have a couple more questions here. Um, someone is asking about the legality of having I-9 and W-4 type documents flowing back into the candidate record that everyone at the company could see. Oh yeah, great. another great question. So you don't have to flow back any document at all. It's not default that they flow back. You have control over what flows back, when it flows back, and, you, and then you can even label what file type they are as well. So if you don't, if there's any documentation that you want to keep inside the onboarding area, so only onboarding admins have access to it, you can 100% do that as well. So you have the flexibility for either. Great. Uh, a lot of good questions here. Um, someone asked, is onboarding only available after there has been a placement? No, again, great question. So onboarding is available to anybody to trigger at any time. So it could be if a candidate registers with you and it's come through your website, for example, that candidate hits the system, you can send an onboarding document at that stage. Great. Um, another good question here is, uh, are you able to, can you get data um, from documents to different places? Like, can it flow back into different places? I think is what they're asking. Uh, yeah, so what you saw, what you saw Mary Kay do uh, earlier there was with the first name flowed back. You can actually have field flow back go to multiple places as well. It can go to anywhere in a candidate record and go anywhere on a placement record. They're the two destinations or the two entities that are available today. We're still looking at improving that and bringing more. But as of today, you can have, I don't know, let's say you're capturing a piece of information about the candidate and you want it to be on the candidate record and on the placement record, you can have two target flow backs and they will both trigger an update at that state, at that approval stage as well. Great. Uh, another question here is, are you able to edit a document once it has been uploaded? Uh, you can edit a document at any time just by going in, like we viewed the, the French and the English version there. You can make changes to the fields that are mapped on there. If you're actually going to make a change to the actual base document and change the text in there, that's where you'll probably archive off the old version and upload the new version and map those fields on in the new place. Great. Uh, another question here, will data flowback be applicable after the document has been submitted slash approved? Can you repeat that one? Sorry, Alex. Yeah, will data flowback be applicable after the document has been submitted or approved? Yeah, great question. It's on the approval. So nothing will flow back until either somebody has manually approved it 
or if you're happy to let that auto approve, you can set documents to auto approve as well. And that's set at the document level. So even if you've got five documents in a packet, you'll have different levels of approval control over each document within that. Great. Uh, question here about partners, which is a really good question. It says, does Bullhorn have background check partners that integrate into the Bullhorn system? Yeah, I know absolutely. the answer to that, but I'll let you take yeah, it. You, <laughs> yeah, you, you can cover that one, Alex. That's fine. Yeah, we absolutely do. And we actually just relaunched our marketplace site. If you go to bullhorn.com slash marketplace, you can actually sort by background check uh, partners in your region and, and you'll be able to see the partners that we work with. Um, let's see what else there is. A ton of questions in here. Um, someone asked, how can you retract a document once it's sent? Yeah, absolutely. You can do that. You can do that at document level or even at the packet level. So you not only do you have the control to send a document, but once it's sent and you go into that candidate's mini profile inside the onboarding section, you have the ability to pull that back. No problem. You, you can even reset, leave it out there, but maybe reset the data that's in there as well. Great. Uh, we're getting a ton of questions in here, but there is a couple more. Um, does this, I think this is referring to the Uber example that was demonstrated today. It says, does it automatically send the Uber packet if the candidate's placement is at Uber? Yeah, that's, that's absolutely one of the automated triggers you can build. So you can have the client name driver packet. And then from that, so anyone you place at Uber, you may send three or four documents relating to that client to them. Awesome. Uh, a similar vein here, someone asked, will the completed onboarding documents automatically notify the sender? Uh, that is something we're working on improving at the moment. At the moment, there's a, there's a bit of a manual way to do it, but on our list is definitely one of improving the notification that's on there. Great. Uh, I think that we got to uh, most of the questions here. If we did not get to your question today, um, we will definitely follow up with you after. I, I really love to see all this, this action. I saw someone asking about price and next steps. We'll definitely be reaching out to you. Um, so with that, I'd just like to thank today's presenters and uh, we, as I said at the beginning, you will receive today's recording in your inbox in the next 24 hours. Thanks everyone. Thank you everybody. Thanks for your time.